One of my most popular projects is the flip top tool cart stand which I introduced in January. It uses a metal conduit as the axle, uh, metal pins to lock it into place and it allows two tools in one floor space. However, there are problems with it. It wasn't built all that well. It's a little bit rickety. Um, the height isn't perfect for the tools that we actually want on it. The casters weren't in the greatest position, so it's actually a bit of a bear to move around. So that's why we have made the Mark II. The Mark II features many improvements, such as a locking handle. It also features four magnetic flip stops that help keep the top in place. This flange on the other side stops the conduit and metal rod from moving laterally. The extra rails provide extra rigidity and the uh, polyurethane casters help the cart move more smoothly. We skipped showing the boring milling of a construction pine to something squarish and usable. We're starting by squaring off one end and trimming the other to length by using the crosscut sled and a stop block clamp to the flints. Next up is cutting the bridle joint and this is done at the bandsaw. A stop block on the fence ensures everything is cut to the same depth. You might notice a spacer next to the fence and this is as thick as the kerf of the bandsaw blade. This allows with the same setup to cut the bridle and the tenon. The bridles are cut with the spacer, the tenons are cut without. There are a lot of ways to clean out the bulk of the bridle and the drill press is one of the easiest. Just use a fortune bit that's slightly smaller and it removes most of the waste. Then it's a fairly simple job of just chiseling away the remainder and the whole block pops out. Because I ignored Paul's advice about cutting the shoulders of the tenons on the table saw before using the bandsaw to cut the cheeks, I had to go back and cut the shoulders using the bandsaw. Not ideal, but it worked out okay. For the shaft of the flip top cart, the two top tenon members receive a 23mm bore centered horizontally and vertically. The drill press was set to stop just shy of going all the way through, so the workpiece was flipped and drilled from the other side to avoid tear out. Because the joints weren't perfect, we opted to use epoxy. Yellow glue would have probably worked, but the gap filling properties of epoxy were pretty appealing. We also mixed in a few scoops of epoxy filler to thicken the mixture up. We've been buying our epoxy from Classic Boat Supplies in Queensland, and we've been very happy with the service. At this point, we got a new miter saw. I named it Bert. Using Bert and the table saw, we broke down the remaining material for the four cross members and the components for the flip top sandwich. Two of the cross members were 40 by 40, two were 80 by 40.
I cut the 12mm plywood for the flip top sandwich. This time we're using poplar ply which is overkill but that's what we had on hand. On the Mark 1 the pine ply hasn't had any issues. For the bracing of the sandwich we decided to add a third member, so rather than cutting something else down we just glued up all the offcuts to get the 56mm needed. While not strictly needed, all of the cross members were dominoed in. Pocket screws or dowels or possibly even regular screwing through the frame would have worked but this was really good practice for now. Having the four cross members in the Mark II design has really stiffened up the frame, removing any of the racking issues from the original. I paid careful attention to the placement of the casters, making sure they were all nice and square and in the same location. This seemed to pay off in the long run. We're also trying out some new, to us, polyurethane wheel casters, and as an added bonus, they're red. Rather than gluing the sandwich, we opted to go with screws in case any further modifications were needed. We kinda went a bit overboard with how many screws we used, but two people make pretty light work of this. The flip stops are attached with some butt hinges directly to the legs. A small scrap of ply was added to the sandwich pieces with two screws holding it in place and one screw in the centre acting as the point the magnet would grab against. This means we can adjust the screw in and out in case we get the placement wrong. With the flip stop attached and in place, the location of the screw could be marked on the flip stop. Using a 10mm drill bit, a hole could be drilled and filled with some thick CA glue and two magnets popped in. Some accelerators sped up the drying time. Ideally we would have used larger 20mm magnets but the order from eBay still hasn't arrived. However these flip blocks can be easily replaced at any time. The tools are attached using M6 bolts and M6 T-nuts on the other side of the sandwich and it was a bit of a bear getting it attached by myself but Nat was having a nap with the cat.
What's nice about this design is that these additional rails mean that we can put a thin sheet of plywood and whatever's underneath it's going to be protected from dust or grinder shavings, meaning we can put a, all the accessories, so the miter gauge, the uh, cleaning stick for the sanding belts, um, the grinding jigs, all that sort of stuff, can all be on the cart accessible at any time. Before, with the other cart, we had to have any accessory in a drawer somewhere, which meant more often than not, it was a real pain to get everything going. I really enjoyed this project because I got to try out a new technique for me, which was cutting bridle joints on the bandsaw. The other thing I like about shop furniture projects is that tolerances aren't as important. So it helps you build confidence because the mistakes aren't as drastic. I also loved that Paul did all the design work, so I didn't have to do that, and I got to ride on a cart. Thanks for watching.